Over the last six years, I've applied to hundreds of different job openings at Apple. Out of those hundreds, I was selected to do an interview for nine different positions. I'll explain what the nine roles were for, when I interviewed for them, and some of the lessons I learned from being rejected. That way you can learn from these lessons and my mistakes so you don't get rejected yourself. Also I apologize for not posting a YouTube video these last few weeks. It was build season at my startup so I was busy working over 12 hours a day managing the build of these robots and even helping build some of these robots as well from scratch. But the engineering build is now done so here's to more consistent uploads from now on. Anyways my journey at Apple began in the summer of 2018. I got an interview for an audio PM intern position. This was a program management role and back then I had no idea how technical Apple interviews can be so I bombed it. And the reason I got that interview was truly just because I had one bullet point that mentioned program management on my resume at the time and that one bullet point really attracted the Apple recruiter which is why they chose to interview me. Like the whole interview was just them grilling me on this one bullet point on my resume. It's insane. I then had a bit of a dry spell for a while. Then in October of 2019, I got three interviews for three different positions at Apple. I remember that day very clearly because all three interviews were on Monday, October 7th, 2019, the day right before my birthday. The interviews were all back to back, so I was a little stressed. From 10.30 to 11 a.m., I was interviewing for an Apple iPhone and watch product design internship role. Then from 1.30 to 2 p.m., I was interviewing for an Apple mechanical design and quality engineering internship role. Then from 2.30 p.m. to 3 p.m., I was interviewing for an Apple soft goods iPad product design internship role. Now, it's obviously a little hard for me right now to talk about the experience from, well, about three years ago, but luckily, I had filmed this video right after I completed these interviews of my initial thoughts. Here's what Tamer from three years ago had to say about his first ever few Apple interviews. Today's October 7, 2019. I just... I had three Apple interviews today. It was honestly so surreal having three Apple interviews in one day. I hope I get like the second interview. I, f I feel like I did good on the iPhone product design one and the iPad product design one, but the mechanical design quality engineering one, man, that one was really tough. He asked me a lot of like super detailed stuff about projects I've worked on in the past that I couldn't answer. And I hope that I actually do get, eventually get a job offer from for one of these positions and work at Apple from January, uh, August, 2020. That's the goal. Uh, so naive. Unfortunately, I didn't get a job offer for any of these positions, but that's okay because fast forward to December of 2019, I got another interview for another position at Apple. This one was pretty exciting. It was a product design engineering internship role for the special projects group or SPG for short at Apple. As the name implies, is a team at Apple that works on super secret projects. But I think that team would have been working on the Apple car just based on rumors I've read online about the SPG team at Apple. Anyways, unfortunately, that interview ended up being another rejection. That's it for the internship interviews I had with Apple. Fast forward then to September of 2020, I started applying to full-time roles with Apple because I would have been graduating in April of 2021 and I kind of just wanted to have something lined up. In September of 2020, I interviewed at Apple for an engineering product manager role on the team working on Siri. They had me work on an assignment for them and that assignment took me a few days to complete. I legit ignored my schoolwork for those few days and was just purely focused on doing the best I can on that assignment. I then submitted that assignment to the recruiter and again, I put in a lot of work into that assignment. The recruiter said she'll get back to me within a week if they're gonna be moving forward. You know, I was pretty confident with the work I did in this assignment. But 13, 14 days go by and I hear nothing from the recruiter. So I decide, you know, let me email her and see if they have an update. But unfortunately, they completely ghosted me and I never heard back from them since. That one honestly kind of hurt. And from that experience, I decided not to apply to Apple roles for a while. Fast forward to March of 2021, a friend of mine refers me to a full-time role at Apple as an input devices product design engineer. I was honestly not gonna do that interview, but honestly, Apple to me is kind of like a toxic ex. No matter what you can do, you just can't get rid of it sometimes. So I did a few interviews for that position with a bunch of different engineers on the team, but to no surprise, I was rejected and heartbroken once again. Then in September of 2021, I had another full-time interview for a small display mechanical engineering role at Apple. I got that interview through a referral as well. I did a bunch of interviews for that position, again, with a bunch of different engineers on the team, but 
it ended up in another rejection. Finally, in February of 2022, a recruiter reached out to me to interview for a full-time iPhone and Apple Watch product design engineering role. I did one interview with them, but I was actually happily employed at the time, so I rejected them after all these years of being rejected by them, and it felt so good. So technically, they rejected me eight times, but I got the pleasure of saying no to them once at least. But here are seven things I learned from all my rejections at Apple that can help you from being rejected if you choose to apply and work for Apple. First, you must understand your own resume very, very well. Every skill, bullet point, or project on it needs to be extremely intentional. So if an interviewer asks you to explain a bullet point or a project on your resume in a lot of detail, you should be able to elaborate on it without any hesitation at all. I personally made this mistake before where I included bullet points on my resume that I couldn't really elaborate on. For example, in one of my failed Apple interviews, on my resume, I talk about my experience with welding. Honestly, I didn't have a lot of experience with it, but I was exposed to it, so I just put it on my resume. That was a mistake because in one of my Apple interviews, the interviewer decided to grill me purely for 30 minutes on that one welding bullet point. So fair to say, I know why I wasn't successful in that interview. Since then, I've learned that with every bullet point on my resume, I need to be able to talk about it and elaborate on it in more detail for at least two to three minutes in an interview situation. I should be able to answer questions about technical project details, how it came to fruition, its significance, etc. If when you're preparing for an interview, there is a bullet point that you're not really able to elaborate on or explain in more detail, honestly, you should just take it out of your resume because it's gonna cause you a huge headache later down the line when you're interviewing for Apple. Doing so many interviews with Apple, I started to pick up on some patterns that these interviewers tend to use. The interview process was almost always broken down into three stages. The initial stage was the tell me about yourself section. The second stage was the project section. And the third stage was the technical interview section of the interview. Knowing this pattern of how these interviews are structured can help you prepare better. For the tell me about yourself section, I have a one page summary of things that I always talk about. This includes a summary of my work experience, my schooling background, as well as a little bit of my interests. In an interview situation, it usually takes me about two to three minutes to give them a quick summary about myself. This script right here is basically what I say when someone asks me, tell me about yourself. I never really intended on memorizing it, but I just accidentally had it memorized because I've said it so many times in interviews. If you choose to go with a method like this and have a script that you refer to, just make sure in an interview situation, it doesn't sound really rehearsed and memorized. It has to still sound natural. Next for the project section, I have a document where I wrote down paragraphs about my main projects at work. This is what it looks like. I also know the type of follow-up questions I usually get asked in interviews like why sheet metal or how I implemented DFA, so I'd have answers to these questions as well. Third comes the technical questions section. This is the most unpredictable part since you really never know what kind of technical questions the interviewer will choose to ask you. So what I'd recommend doing is having engineering summary notes of the main concepts that really relate to your engineering major, which brings me to my third tip. For mechanical engineering, the main concepts I need to have a good understanding of are mechanics of deformable solids, material science, GD&T, and manufacturing methods. So I'd have these handwritten and typed notes that summarize everything I need to know about these four main topics. The more interviews I do, the more tough questions I face, which allows me to really know what I don't know. So I Google it, teach myself, and practice it a little bit so in my next interview I don't fail in that technical question. The beauty of this approach is once you make these notes once, you can just quickly review them before each interview, so your interview prep becomes really quick and straightforward. Again, the purpose of making these engineering summary notes is because it's a really quick and efficient way for a young engineer like you or myself to build our technical expertise as fast as we can. You need to convince the interviewer that you can think like an engineer. So when they ask you questions like explain how something is fabricated or explain why you chose a specific material for a part, you can answer it correctly and provide proof. This is something that I never used to do. I never used to practice before my interviews. I thought doing mock interviews was a waste of time, but I was really, really wrong. Having a friend seriously sit down in front of you and pretend to be interviewing you for a serious job makes a huge difference. They'll give you honest feedback on what's not working. They'll tell you if you said something in a weird way. They'll tell you if you're rambling or saying things that don't make sense. If you're not clearly explaining your thought process, they'll ideally let you know as well. 
Just make sure that you're both serious and you're not just joking around. This is not you guys hanging out together. This is him or her seriously sitting down and grilling you and giving you tough interview questions. And make sure to have them do a mock interview with you in the same format an interviewer would. You know, go through the tell me about yourself, then the project section, and then end it off with some pretty difficult technical questions. Trust me, this is super, super effective. Now, another way to practice for interviews is to film yourself answering interview questions. Sometimes in our head, we think we're making sense, but once you film yourself and you watch your own footage of you answering a question, you realize you're actually just rambling on and not making any sense whatsoever. So film yourself answering questions like, tell me about yourself. Explain this project on your resume in more detail. Why did you choose that specific material? How did you make sure your design is reliable? Explain the manufacturing process used in this project. Draw a stress strain curve. What's the difference between injection molding and die casting? How do you calculate the flexion of a cantilever beam? Describe how you would improve the design of an AirPod. Why is an I-beam stronger than a rectangular beam? Describe three modes of heat transfer and how they differ. I could keep going on with an even longer list of questions. But anyways, place your phone on your desk, turn the camera on and start answering these interview questions. I know it may be awkward at first, you may be a little shy, but just forget that, just hit record and start talking. This is just for you to get better and to clearly be able to see what your weaknesses are. And again, no one ever has to see this, this is just for you. When you're interviewing for a role, you should come prepared with your past work that you can share with the interviewer. They'll obviously definitely ask you questions about your past, so you should be able to show them pictures, videos, or even prototypes of what you've done before. Take them through how the project started, what tools you needed to build it, your thought process behind every decision involved in the project, and what the final outcome was. They'll definitely have follow-up questions and they can be pretty confusing. Even though it's your project, they'll make you feel like they know it better than you. They'll continuously grill you and ask you questions until you honestly can't even answer anymore. The way I get around that is by slowing down and realizing it's my own project and I definitely know it better because I actually worked on it. I answered their questions as best as possible and if they had a follow up question I couldn't answer then I'll make a note of it and then I'll review it and try to figure it out after the interview so I don't mess it up in the future in another interview. Sometimes they honestly just grill you like this because they want to see where your limit is. The next tip I have is to use Glassdoor. Just Google Apple Mechanical Engineering Interview Glassdoor or whatever type of engineering you're in. You'll get access to a long list of interview questions that people have shared from their experiences interviewing at Apple. They'll talk about what their experience was like and whether they got an offer. But what's most important is you should compile a list of interview questions asked. Make sure you know how to answer them because most likely you'll get asked the exact same questions in your interview, especially when it comes to the technical questions aspect of the interview. Moving on, interviewing at Apple isn't easy. It's stressful and they'll grill you a lot. So to be successful and not lose your mind when interviewing for them, you need to have a clear reason of why you even want to work at Apple to begin with. For example, if your reasoning for wanting to work at Apple is you want to be surrounded by the best engineers in the consumer electronics industry and you want to work with them, then that's a decent enough reason that if you get rejected, you wouldn't really lose hope as much. And please, please, please don't let rejection get to you or affect your well-being. You're worth more than a job. At the end of the day, it's usually nothing personal. It's just a sign that you have a lot more to learn. With every rejection, try to figure out why you got rejected, then fill in these knowledge gaps so you're stronger in your next future interviews. Anyways, I hope this video brought you value. If it did, check out this video where I reenact what engineering interviews are like, or check out that video where I share some of the things that every engineering student needs to know before starting. Anyways, I'll see you in the next one. Peace!